All right, welcome to another exciting episode of the Crimson Sith channel. Today we're going to be looking at another review for the X-Wing game. First up is the new Stealthipede or Sethipede. It's Sheathipede class shuttle. Now this first premiered in the Star Wars Rebels show. Um, it's a nice little ship. Basically there was another uh, ship that could dock with the or start docked with the Phantom in the game and this is the other ship that can dock. It's the or I mean the other ship that could dock with the Ghost, sorry. This is the Phantom 2. The Phantom 1 could dock with it as well. Anyway, we're going to start uh, to start, I love this little model. It is the tiniest model, but it's awesome. Uh, they did a great job in the paint job on this thing. Uh, let's just jump, with it, jump into the cards. AP5 is the lowest of the pilots. He has a pilot skill of 1, 15 point cost. I think it's reasonable. It has 2 attack, 2 agility, 4 haul, 1 shield. And I would like to point out that this ship has a rear firing arc, which is cool. So it can attack out of the front or the back with its primary weapon. Oh, and his ability. Oh, before we go any further, the ship has a coordinate action. That's what that little weird looking triangle thing is on the, the right side of the card. Um, that is, with the exception of the uh, Kelleren shuttle, uh, this is this. This previously was previously was an only an epic action, so now this is the second ship of the game that uh, can do it. That's not an epic ship. And uh, the ability reads: when you perform the coordinate action, after you choose a friendly ship and before it performs a free action. You may receive two stress tokens to remove one stress token from it. So basically, that way, stress ships can still do the coordinate effect. Because normally, they can't do a free action if they are stressed. So, AP5 could be very useful, but, you know, whatever. I, I think that a nice crew for AP5 would be uh, Inspiring Recruit because then you could get rid of those stress tokens both by just doing group maneuver next turn. And then you can do it again. Um, Zeb is the next one, three pilot skill. After defending, you may cancel a crit before, or you may cancel crit results before hit results. He always has the same ability in every ship that he's piloting. Pretty solid. I believe he is also pilots the other Phantom and also a TIE Fighter for the Rebels. Oh, he's 16 points. Next up is Ezra Bridger. Again, he's been a pilot a few times and a crew. Uh, when defending, if you are stressed, you may change up to two of your eyeball results to evade results. 17 point cost, pilot skill 5, and he has an EPT, which is nice. All right, moving on, we have Fen Rao. Second time he's in the game. First time he's a rebel pilot though. Normally he's a scum pilot for the protectorates. He's a pilot skill nine again. Uh, comes in at a point cost of 20 with an APT. His ability is when an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one through three, comes the active ship during the combat phase. If you are not stressed, you may receive one stress token. If you do, the ship cannot spend tokens to modify its dice when attacking this round. Kind of interesting. I know a lot of people are using him. He is perhaps the cheapest 9 in the game for Rebels, I think. Really cheap way to just get a high pilot skill ship. And I don't like taking stress tokens myself, so I'm not a super huge fan of his ability, but I do love the cost effectiveness of the pilot skill, even though the ship is only to attack. <laughs> but it coordinates, so it's very good for helping your other aces. 
Um, a lot of interesting cards in here. Um, oh, I always forget the dial. First, let's go into the dial, though. So first off, I've got to bring the focus back. There we go. So we got a one slight. It's white. One straight, of course, green. Pretty standard for rebels. Got the two hard, two green slight, two green or yeah, two green straight. Uh, red three hard. I always like having the red option. Um, then we got a three slight. That's white and a green three straight. Three K turn, not bad. And then a four option with a red. I do like having the red four. I'd rather have an option to go fast if I need it and take a stress, but did not have it. Here are those titles that I was briefly mentioning. It comes with a new title for the ghost. Basically the difference is uh, it allows you to equip it, which is the same. Um, I guess it is the same, right? It just includes the different name for the ghost title. And then the Phantom, ti Phantom 2 title is different. It says, while you are docked, the, the ghost can perform primary weapon attacks from its special firing arc. While you are docked, at the end of the activation phase, the ghost may perform a free coordinate action. And notice, those two things are separated by a slight space, which means they are separate effects, not dependent upon the other. I know that is a point of contention with some viewers. Uh, next up is Chopper. Everyone's talking about him. He's one of the cards everyone's talking about. He's an astromech now. Before he was in the game as a crew, now he's in the game as an astromech. And his ability is action. Discard one equipped upgrade card to recover one shield. And he has one point cost. I think he's great. And I think he's great because you can put him on a Y-Wing, because it has an astromech slot. And Y-Wings can take so many zero-point upgrade costs cards. You can take Bomb Loadout. You can take, you know, zero-point, uh, uh, like, Guidance Chips. You can take uh, uh, the Title, also zero-point cost. So an interesting thing was with the Title on a Y-Wing, you can lock your turret in forward-fired position to attack twice. And then after the initial Joust... If you get hurt, probably, you can use Chopper to discard the title and it unlocks your turret. And you recover a shield for that. Like, I would spend an action just to unlock my turret myself. So, Chopper, I think, is going to be great on Y Wings. I can't wait to use him for that. Flight Assist, Astromech, I think they also thought might be used on, on uh, Y Wings. At least I heard. Um, his ability is you cannot attack ships outside your firing arc, so I mean it hurts a little bit, but after you execute a maneuver, if you did not overlap a ship or obstacle, and there are no other ships inside your firing arc at range 1 to 3, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. And he's only one point. So I think he'd be great on the great, on the, the classic T-65 X-Wing doesn't normally have booster barrel roll, so it would allow you to do that. I I like this card, and for one point, it makes a, a ship that normally wouldn't have that option have quite a bit of versatility, because the T-65 is screwed if it doesn't have a target. It's a jousting ship. In a, in a game meta where everything can boost and barrel roll, I think it needed that. And I don't know if this is the card to fix it, but I think this is a card that can give it some options. I think they still need a T65 fix, but I think we're getting there, if not slowly. Maul is an interesting card and a point of contention, of course, because it has the world's tiniest space in the middle of this damn thing. Pardon my language. Maul comes in at three points. He has a crew. He says, scum only, but you can ignore that restriction if your squad contains Ezra Bridger. So that's why he's in a rebel uh, ship. 
Um, yes, this is the Darth Maul, but this is after he sheds the title. When attacking, if you are not stressed, you may receive any number of stress tokens to reroll that many attack dice. And then notice, there's a slight space there. And then it says, after performing an attack that hits, you may remove one stress token. It says tokens. One of your stress tokens. There it is. So, interesting way to remove stress as well. That's why I was like, three points? He's not really worth it just for that effect. The uh, reroll effect, I don't think. Because there's Zuckus for one. <sighs> Ugh. I guess this is your dice. And then, uh, however, the fact that you're removing stress whenever you successfully hit, that is awesome. For that effect alone, I might consider the card. And then for the initial effect, it's awesome. Um, on a ship that gets a lot of stress, like on the Scum Faction, the um, Slaver ship, the YV-666, that ship gets a lot of stress, I would probably put it on there. Courier Droid is another crew I am super excited about. Uh, he's limited, which means you can only take one per ship, but you, just uh, in case there's any confusion, he's not unique. So you can have more than one of them in a squad, just not more than one on the same ship. His ability is, at the start of the place forces step, you may choose to treat your pilot skill value as 0 or 8 until the end of the, end of the step. He has a crew, and he costs nothing. He costs nothing. So if you have an extra crew slot, why not put him in there? If you have three ships, each with an empty crew slot, you could throw him in there. Let me provide you have three of these. And uh, you could basically decide if you want to place before or after your opponent. I mean, people could bring aces, but still, you're not paying anything for it. So the option's nice. I think the point is also that if you used a bunch of them, you could also choose which ship to place first. Because they're all tied as 0 or 8. But uh, either way, it provides options. And I'm a huge fan of options. So these two cards at the end, I was most excited about. I know a lot of people were excited about uh, Chopper and Flight Assist Astromech. For obvious reasons. I think together, those are the four best cards in this pack. I'm um, not super huge Rebel fan. I'm more of a... I mean, I'm a fan of the show, but I mostly fly Scum and Imperials. So, I mean, if I'm excited about a Rebel ship, it's because it includes Scum cards. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that's what I'm getting with uh, Maul and uh, the Courier Droid. Although I do fly some of the classic Rebel ships. I do love the Y-Wing. So, we might have to visit Chopper. I don't know. Anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe. I have a whole bunch more videos coming out. Uh, I'll, again, I only bought one of these ships. I think this is a support ship. Although, to be honest, I contemplated buying three just to get more courier droids. <laughs> and flight assist Astromax, you know, that's, that's another card I might want to have more of. Anyway, I got a ton of ships to get to. Wave 12 and 13 were combined, and they just hit the stores, so I'm going to cruise that along. Stay tuned.